Hi, this is the ninth and final video in the licensing and contract sequence. My name is Scott Althaus. I'm with the Klein Center for Advanced Social Research at the University of Illinois. And I want to walk you through some ideas that my collaborators and I have come up with over the years of how to navigate the legal boundaries in working with sensitive textual data across institutional or national boundaries. And what I'm presenting to you is coming from a paper that's recently been published with the unusual title, The Trouble with Sharing Your Privates. I guarantee you, if you enter that one into Google Scholar, there is only one that will come up. It's easy to find. And we start with the standard way of thinking about legal boundaries. There are two of them. There's copyright law and there's contract licensing law. Copyright law can be thought of as a national level uh, entity and contractor licensing law can be thought of as an organizational level constraint. And the challenge that we want to explore is what happens when you have collaborators in different countries, which set of copyright provisions applies? Or what about collaborators who are in different universities? How do you navigate the licensing issues that will come up to facilitate collaboration among uh, a team that has that kind of characteristic? And if you go to the standard legal authorities in your campus, if your experience has been anything like mine and you raise these difficult questions that entail risk for the campus, the typical answer is you can't do that. So I think we've got some better ideas that, that should be maybe legally compliant and I want to talk with you about them. So first are some short-term solutions that might respect legal boundaries. I want to under, underscore might here because every license is different and you're going to have to check and see which among these might work for you uh, to be compliant with the legal boundaries that you're having to face in your particular context. The first is using non-consumptive or non-expressive research modes. Think of the Honey Trust Research Center that provides extracted feature access to the entire Hadi Trust corpus. Uh, you, you can think about that as the Google Books corpus. I know I've just offended a bunch of people um, on Zoom by saying that, but that allows for uh, access, ready access to entities, sentiment scores, token counts, verb counts, um, all of this kind of informational layering that uh, underlies expressive uses of uh, text where we don't have to violate expressive use in order to get at this informational layer. A second possibility is publishing metadata and extracted features that allow your collaborative team to actually find the full text content on their own through their own licensing regime. So you can publish for any newspaper article, the title, the author, the date of publication, the source of publication, and often your collaborators in other places can use that to track down where they can get access to the full text within their current licensing regime. And sometimes it's easier than that. My center publishes as needed URLs into which are built in the unique 16 digit identifiers for LexisNexis content. So a user can drop that URL into their web browser. And if they are in an institutional setting that has licensing that is compliant with access to that content, that content will magically show up in their web browser. And for people who are in institutions that don't have that licensing access, they'll get a 404 file not found. And that's a way to share full text data of a sort, um, but without violating any of the terms that you're bound by. A third possibility is providing remote access to compliant computer systems. Think about a virtualized server that resides within an institution that's bound by its licensing agreements, but the data always stays on the hard drive of that compliant physical server. What's different in this model is that you can bring in users, not just on campus, but from other countries and other institutions to remote in and access that data that always stays on that server, that, that never comes off, and, and, and for which the researcher never removes extracted features that would contain any copyrighted content, that could be a model that might work for you as well. The fourth one is publishing or sharing small validation data sets. Think of random samples of larger corpora that uh, are published under fair use provisions, if that would apply. That would allow your collaborators to develop and refine their algorithms that they want to run on the larger corpus. When they've got their algorithms up to speed and, and, and producing the kind of output that they want, they send those algorithms over to you and in a compliant manner within your institutional boundaries, you run that algorithm over the entire corpus and then deliver back the extracted features or whatever output comes, again, checking, making sure that none of that is violating terms of copyright or licensing terms uh, to be able to get that back to your collaborators. Um, a last one, which works in every instance that we've tried it so far, has been bring your collaborators to you. 
work face to face because most campus licensing provisions for library materials have a cutout for visiting scholars. So if you bring somebody physically to your location, you can often get them full access temporarily to the same content that you have. And the Client Center has been very successful in bringing collaborators from other places to work through intensive sessions that might last days or weeks for the, the specific parts of the research that have to be done on full text. And then those researchers can go back to their home institutions and can work with extracted features or other products that come out that are compliant to share after they've gotten into the full text content. There are also some longer term solutions that we can explore together. One is building more collaborative open data sets like the Linguistic Data Consortium at Penn uh, that allows for a very small and reasonable licensing fee access to full text data that can be shared across national jurisdictions. There's also Amazon's AWS Common Crawl, which uh, is freely available web content at very large scale. Licensing might apply here, so you're going to have to check on that but it's a possibility. And another model is just thinking about Wikipedia. A lot of content out there can be mined, can be shared. There's no restriction on who can get at it. A second longer term solution is to advocate both within our institutions and within our professional associations for better data agreements that have clearer terms, that have more expansive allowable uses for research purposes that give us clearer boundaries so that we can know what we can and what we can't do, um, but that also respect the important need for researchers to have uh, relatively free and broad access to sensitive and copyright materials. A third option is uh, solving a local problem. I found often that when I want to do something that's outside of what everybody already knows how to do legally, I end up talking with somebody in front of a desk where the answer is going to be no, because nobody's always quite sure exactly who's got the final authority. So if your campus can develop a buck stops here position, and we'll call this a data ombudsperson who is empowered to make that final decision for your campus of what you're allowed to do with text and what you're not allowed to do, who knows the legal landscape, who understands the licensing, and who can um, you know, calm people down who might be a little bit concerned about what you want to do, that it's okay. If we can empower positions like that, that is going to open up a broad opportunity for scholars and students to do expansive text data mining research that is really going to be innovative. So that is all that I have here that concludes our video segment for licensing and contracts. We're now going to open it up for conversation, discussion, interaction, so we can hear from one another about what resonated for you and um, what questions or issues we might want to explore in a deeper way together.